gents, uh, D- Dennis LD here with another DMs Montreal beer review, finally back with a full episode and finally ready to review this beer, I've had it in the fridge for a while, this is the Adnams Broadside from the Adnams Brewery in I believe yeah, Southwold in Suffolk in England and from what I've read it, it says here it's a strong amber pale ale but it's actually it's their take on the American IPA style so um, I'm really excited and interested to see what this is going to taste like uh, I got this bottle in Moscow um, during my winter break and it was not cheap, it was about six dollars but then all, all, all imported beers there in that special shop I went to were really expensive, especially the English ones but you know at least they have this variety that we don't get here in Montreal It says here, Adam's Innovation is a distinctive beer to savour Intriguingly hoppy and golden in colour with an ABV of 6.7, a delicious beer to celebrate Adam's innovative production techniques based on a distinguished heritage. Serve chilled. Okay, so that's good. I'm going to use my um, lovely Spitfire glass, which I, which I think I got it in the same day. It was a part of the Spitfire uh, gift pack. It's probably the only officially stamped pint glass I've got. Okay, so this is my second beer from Adam's, and it's got the same cap as the Broadside review you'd had. It says Adam Southwold, Salt Bay Brewery. Mmm, interesting. Alright, so here's the pour. As um, Simon from Real Ale Guide would say, it's just sort of an American style pour with a plentiful head. Yeah, this does remind me of an American IPA. It definitely looks much, much paler than any typical English style IPA. So it's a nice, clear, golden color and a nice. Uh, frothy head and I'm still guessing a very nice hoppiness to it I'm guessing pine and floral and uh, some even some tropical fruit notes this reminds me of an east coast IPA similar to maybe a southern tier IPA or even those crafty uh, sagacity high life or something yeah it does smell like an IPA it does look like an American IPA it definitely looks different from any uh, um, English style IPA cheers Oh, this is right on. This is really good. Wow, this is super smooth. To be honest with you, I didn't even know what style of beer this was when I got it. I just thought it was, you know, innovation, special release, limited edition. You know, I thought it's going to be interesting. But this is a really, really quality kind of proper American IPA. It does remind me of a good East Coast IPA. It's not as, you know, citrusy and grapefruit-like, but it has a nice soft fruity profile with maybe mango, papaya, a bit of pineapple and a very nice solid pine and floral base. Fairly sweet, very very smooth, very low in combination but not flat either. Uh, it's got a nice uh, mouthfeel, very soft, not tasting alcohol that much and it's got a nice hot bite and it's been a couple months or even more than that since it was brewed I believe so um, this is really good. And um, whoa, boy, boy, am I glad that this is a half liter bottle, not a 12-ouncer. 12, 12 ounce. I'm going to come back to you, but so far, this is really, really good. Even if this, you know, I could probably think that this is brewed in America if I didn't know that this is an English beer. So, uh, top job. They really, uh, you know, met the expectations and everything. Cheers. All right, I'm back with the Adnams Innovation. All right, so um, I'm liking this beer a lot. And the... Um, as much as I liked it in the beginning, I'm still liking it almost as much. It's a bit less lively at this point, but I think it's still it's still a very solid brew, and it's surely um, tasting a lot like a true American IPA. So, oh, it still smells great. So let me break it down to categories. Uh, for the appearance, I'm going to give this a 7. I mean, um, if they're aiming for an American-style IPA, and that's the truth according to the website, uh, they really accomplished this goal here. Uh, the color is just perfect. It's just overall, you know, the lacing in the head is not that great. Uh, but it's still a good looking IPA. 7 out of 10. For the smell, step up from that. It's a really interesting smell. Again, nothing out of the ordinary, but it's it's still quite peculiar. There's a bit of a biscuity kind of feel to it. A bit of honey and then the usual hops and floral notes and a bit of citrus. And, some nice fruity notes, it's good. As far as the taste goes, I wouldn't call this phenomenal or you know super super good. 
but considering this is an English ale, and I love English ales, don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of the traditional uh, English ales, and I also like English IPAs. I appreciate them, I don't consider them, you know, mild or, you know, I don't think there's something lacking in those beers, it's just different kind of styles of beer. But in this case, I'm, you know, judging this as an American IPA, not judging, just, you know, tasting this. And uh, I'm going to say this is a good tasting beer, 8 out of 10 overall. I would give this a 9 in the beginning, but uh, overall, um, as I said, it's not as lively as it used to be, so... But there's a bit of a nice layer to it. It's all like, uh, you know, a baby born in England and then moved to the States and raised there. Uh, something like that. So an American-style IPA, but there's something English about it. Go figure it out. Uh, the three varieties of hops they use, by the way, are one from the UK, the Steering Goldings, one from America, uh, the Columbus variety, and there's one more from Slovenia, which I'm not going to dare to pronounce because I'm going to get it wrong. It starts with a B, ends with an A. Go figure it out. I'll probably um, post a link or something. But yeah, it's it's a nice blend of everything, and they use wheat malts, which kind of uh, comes through in the sort of in the aftertaste and the feel to it, the feel you get to it. Um, reminds me of many Saint Ambroise beers because all of those are brewed with wheat as well. The mouth is going to get a nine. Hands down, this is really, really good. Smooth, but yet yeah, there's some peppery kind of spiciness in the tongue, which kind of adds to the whole experience. It doesn't, you know, take away from the smoothness. It just adds a little zest to the beer, and I really like it. And I, I don't taste any alcohol. It's a sort of a um, medium body to it. Not at all hefty, not at all, you know. Heavy. It's just really, really good. This, I, I, I love how it feels in the mouth. And the drinkability, I was going to give this like a 6 or a 7 because, you know, it's a fairly strong beer. But then I just realized, hit me, that this is 6.7. This is pretty average for East Coast American IPAs or even West Coast. You know, things like the Flower Power or the Torpedo can be as close as, you know, 7% ABV. So this is... For, for, an Eng for an English beer, this is a strong ale, but uh, this is not that heavy, and it really drinks well. 8 out of 10 overall as well, for Adam's Innovation, I'm really glad I tried this beer. By the way, shout out to Chad from Chad's Beer Reviews. Um, he had received a whole parcel of beers from Adam's, and he's reviewed most of them, I think, by now, or at least half of them, something. Correct me if I'm wrong. But those are traditional English beers. Um, this one is quite different. Alright, so uh, that's about it for Adam's Innovation. See you guys next time. Six good beer. Hopefully next time I'll be back with a Belgian beer. Cheers!